One thing I keep seeing in the comment section. Kobe playing on the super team. 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 I keep seeing that. <sighs> they find any way to win. That's the bottom line to that. Uh, these little stands, they'll find any way to win the argument, any way to make their king not look so bad. And this is another tactic of theirs, which can be easily debunked in a couple of different ways, mainly because, for one, you play. He played in Kobe. Played in L.A. L.A. At, at one point in time was the standard. So L.A. is also one of the bigger markets in the NBA, and not the biggest. Probably second to New York. They got the most money to sign players, and for most of Kobe's career. It's the aura of playing in L.A. and the aura of not playing for the Lakers is what gets people there. At least it was 20-something years ago. And Kobe wasn't forcing these people to be on this team. At one point in time, he had no say in it. In his younger years, Kobe and Shaq years, he had no say in it. The biggest piece that they actually signed during the years was Shaq. They probably probably getting Phil Jackson to coach that team. And then you have the, uh, later on, Carl Malone, Gary Payton. But by that time, the 03, 04 season, those guys were already, well, Carl Malone was 40-something years old. It wasn't the same Carl Malone from 10 years ago. Gary Payton, he was getting closer to 40. Not exactly 40, but these guys wasn't the same players they was uh, 5, 10 years ago. And uh, now they want to call the later teams, the two teams that won, well, it's the same team, but the later team that won in the late 2000s, they want to call that a super team. Oh, Kobe had a super team with Paul Gasol, Arnold Tess, and Lamar Odom. It's like, come on now. Are we really doing this? Or at least Ron or Tess and... Lamar Odom, I don't think they ever going to get to the Hall of Fame. Uh, they weren't like top 10, not even top 20 players. Maybe Ron Artest was at one point in time early in his career, but by the time he went on the Lakers, he wasn't. Uh, <laughs> by the time he got to, he only played on one of those Lakers teams. He, he wasn't on the set first one. And um, Paul Gasol, now he's a Hall of Famer, but it's like, come on now. And those, like I said, those teams wasn't Kobe told me, you better get on my team. I need you to be on my team. It wasn't like that, even though he did. I think he had his way of forcing his hand because the Lakers, as an organization, it seemed like they was getting stagnant around the time. And yes, Kobe did need some help. Most definitely during those uh, mid-2000s. Because he couldn't do that all by himself. As great as he was, uh, not one man can do it all by himself. I think we already know this. But, um, and even when they got Steve Nash and Dwight Howard, Steve Nash was ailing. His back was all messed up. He wasn't the same player. Uh, Dwight was struggling with injuries, struggling to get along with Kobe. And even Kobe himself was struggling with injuries as well. Eventually, he willed the team to get to the playoffs. Or, uh, but, um, yeah. Towards Achilles. And in order to play with Kobe, you had dem he demanded excellence. It wasn't none of this lazy ass crap. No practice, none of this crap. He demanded excellence. You look at Paul Gasol's numbers right quick, for example. And this is how influential Kobe was with his teammates. You look at Paul Gasol's So, 
actually his best year points average wise in blocks was actually second to last seat. No, it wasn't his last full season in Memphis. He averaged 20 points a game, two blocks, three assists, and nine rebounds. But during the first championship run in 0809 season, he had 18.9 points a game. That's what he averaged. He almost averaged a double double, 9.6 rebounds. 9.3.5 assists and one block per game while shooting 78% from the free throw line and shooting 56% from the field and also shooting 50% from the three as well. And he also played in 81 games. Only missed one. Uh, so he pretty much kept the same averages he had the previous season when he was on the Memphis uh, and before he was traded to the Lakers that same season, 07-08 season, same thing, 18 points a game, one block, three assists. Um, he did have eight rebounds, average eight rebounds the year before that. And even during the championship season, he played 65 games. I think he was hurt for most of that season. But also at the same time, he did average 11 rebounds and averaged the same amount of points, 18.3 and 3 assists. That was his number two guy. And Paul Gasol was great, but nobody regarded him to be a top five player, top 10 player like that around the time. And you look at LeBron's super teams, the ones that he created and had to click up to tell everybody to come down to Miami. We always know that third person always suffers. We said this time and time again. Chris Boss suffered. Kevin Love suffered. Westbrook suffered. Numbers down. He had to get used to playing the system. I don't know who's going to be it now. Probably still D'Angelo Russell. Always that third person always suffers. It's always weird, too. So that's that. I don't think I want to test numbers right quick. But everybody that played with Kobe was always better. Let's see right quick. Run our tests. Ooh. This is the run our long run our test. This is Ron Artest Jr., the third, his son, who's now professionally plays the new Fallen Rose. I guess he plays in um, whatever place it's called, Canada. So you look up uh, Ron Artest, or AKA Meadow Sanford Artest. I'm still calling him Ron Artest. Ron Artest, the year before, actually, his numbers went down. But he played a different role because when he was in Houston and in Sacramento and even Indiana, he was pretty much the man. Especially when he was in Sacramento and Houston, he was pretty much the man. Because the previous season when he was on Houston, he averaged 17. But when he went to the Lakers, he averaged 11 rebounds. But his role, his role was only to play defense. He didn't score when he needed to, but he was to play defense. That was... His role. See, that's one thing that's missing in the NBA these days. Not many people want to play a role. And I think that's why some of these super teams do not work because people don't know how to sacrifice and play their role. And that's something that Kobe and even Jordan demanded. And even their coaches demanded it. Everybody has a role to play. Just like, um, they, uh, David Rodman's role was to play defense, of course, and get them damn rebounds. Scotty played defense and made a secondary score. We already know who Jordan, what Jordan's role was. Everybody, all these great championship teams, that everybody has a role to play in it. And I think the problem with some of these super teams now, nobody wants to play a role. Everybody wants to be him. And it's not possible. Everybody can't have the ball. Everybody can't shoot. 
some people will have to sacrifice and play off the ball and do other things to win. And I think that's a lost art to be versatile on the court other than just trying to, I got to score, I got to score, I get my numbers. That's why sometimes they don't work. Sometimes they work, but sometimes they don't work. But when they do work, people know they roll. And I think that it has been a problem with some of these LeBron-led super teams. No one has a role. Nobody knows how to sacrifice. So, that's that. Um, but as far as uh, Kobe playing on super teams, let's say this. All right, so he said he played on super teams. Still one more. <laughs> Still one more in a tougher conference. The Western Conference in the 2000s was a tough conference. Way tougher than the East was. And it's still tougher. Well, I don't know about now. But back when those Miami Heat teams were around, with LeBron and Chris Bosh and Dwayne Wade, what was the competition? The Indiana Pacers? LeBron had... How many super teams now? He had... Technically one in Cleveland, second time gone. Miami and now with LA. Multiple in LA now. And still only won three and a half rings according to some. <laughs> LeBron don't make his teammates better. He makes them worse. Because it's either his way or the highway. And what I mean by that. It's not positive. It's very negative. But anyways, I wouldn't expect the Lepre brains to get what I'm saying. 